Gonna talk about LED lights today. Got Jason Jackson with us, and I don't get to do a lot of videos with Jason because he's a good ways away, so I enjoy this fact that we get to get together. Glad so, to have you. well, Jason, tell me something. Why would a poultry farmer get LED lights? Let's just jump into it. Well, there's lots of reasons, but I, I'm gonna say that the number one reason is cost savings on your power bill. Okay. I think that's probably gonna be the single biggest factor that would make a difference in why someone would make that investment to jump from incandescence or fluorescent lighting to LED. There's there's a lot of benefits with it that um, may not necessarily be as big as the um, the difference in the electrical bill. I think okay. that's going to be the one that's making the, the big leap. So what if, if someone says energy savings, I mean, I'm not going to measure kilowatt, this, that, and the other. What would you say money-wise? Like, would it pay for itself in a certain amount of time, do you suggest? Or, I mean, how are you going to, how can I know that that's going to help me in my, my wallet? Well, certainly they'll pay for themselves, and it will it'll make a difference on what your initial upfront cost is on how long it takes to pay back. So comparing numbers is hard to say because every sure. farm's a little different. In this particular house, we have four rows of lighting on a fairly close spacing where Different farms have different setups, so everybody's a little bit different. So you, you have to look at what the cost of the per bulb cost is going to be locally. Right. That, that's where you're, you're going to have to calculate that on farm to decide whether or not it's uh, uh, how long it'll take for your return on investment. Okay. But the reality of it is it's going to return some of them in as little as one year. Okay, well, that's what I had kind of heard. Maybe a year. Some I'd heard two years, but now price on LED since they've come out has actually gotten a little cheaper. And so in a year, year and a half. Absolutely. The price has dropped a lot in the last couple of years on, on, on these bulbs. Technology, LED technology is getting much better. Their ability to withstand moisture is getting tremendously better. And, and there's a lot of things that can help with your power bill sure. and, and LEDs is probably the single most important thing because our power bill and, and in the poultry business can be very expensive. So every place we can save is important. So uh, having these LED lights, there, there's often some, some great benefits there that, that I, I see that may override uh, any kind of worry on that initial investment. Yeah. Because like I said, if you can pay back in a year, if you're saving that much each year, and the longevity of them is pretty important to me as well. Yeah, and one of the things we talk about with poultry and things that growers are dealing with is there's a lot of things you can't control. You can't control the feed. You can't control what kind of birds you get. You can't control. So there might be a way if we can't necessarily get the money where we wish it would be, maybe we can cut some expenses, just like your budget at home. So maybe some savings in there. So that's one big reason why you would maybe want to go to LED. What would maybe be the second biggest one you think? Well, I definitely think that, that the longevity of the life of the bulb is, is probably the, the second one. And that, that, that's something that a lot of growers would have a difficult time calculating how important it is. I mean, you can see the impact on your monthly power bill for each flock or whatever. You can, right. you can see that yeah. pretty easily, but you don't really, it's not, it's not a static amount of what the replacement cost of your old incandescents cost you. Yeah. Um, unless you've got years of history we're looking back and, and every amount's gonna be a little different. You and know? who's gonna keep up with the price of light bulbs it, over the years? Exactly, <laughs> so uh, the longevity, these lights in this house are right at seven years old. Wow. And, and I have replaced very few of them. I think somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 bulbs in, in, on this entire farm in that seven year time span. They just- How many bulbs you got? You got four mega houses. 66 yes. by 610, Yes, I'm not mistaken. So how many bulbs do you estimate in these four houses? There's about 1,200 bulbs Whew. total on this farm. Yeah. And when, when you start looking at I, I have some of them that never are turned off. Yeah. My porch lights are never off. My control room lights are never right. off. The, the front porch lights are never off. They stay on constantly. And I've never replaced a porch porch bulb that's been on for seven years oh, continuously my goodness. without being turned off. The bulbs inside the chicken houses, we replace them from time to time, but very seldom. Yeah. Like I said, probably 20 to 30 bulbs total on this whole entire farm. Yeah. So it's one of those things where the longevity 
is worth a lot to me. And sure. That's hard to calculate. Sure, labor and who's having to do it and get up there and take time, pay attention to it. And with age, these bulbs, they start losing some of their brightness. Yeah. But <clears throat> as long as you're able to, if you own a light meter, which every poultry farm should own a light meter, they're inexpensive yeah. enough now. If you own a light meter, you can monitor it. And that'll tell you a little bit of when they're getting close enough to need to be replaced. But as long as your, your lighting is still bright enough at the feed pan, then there's no need in replacing these LED bulbs. They just they just seem to keep lasting for a very long time. And a lot of people don't think that they will make it, but like I said, this is, we, we, we pass the, the lighting test every year, have, you know, we, we do it twice a year, and we pass with flying colors, yeah. even at seven year old bulbs. Seven year old. Yeah. You mentioned the light, uh, a light meter. Yes. And we had talked about the importance of that. We may underestimate that sometimes because even from house to house. Give me, explain that a little bit. And I think you even have a light meter. I do. I, I have one right here. These light meters are relatively inexpensive. Okay. They're pretty easy to use. Nearly anyone can figure them out. Out of the case of this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, like I said, it, it's a pretty simple process. You just, you, you've got a, a light meter and you may have to read the manual to figure out how to set them. Sometimes they read in luck. Sometimes they look, read in foot candles, and some of them have have a option of doing both. Right. But the idea that a lot of people want to do is they want to check the lighting right at the feed pan because that's where the birds are going to spend a large amount of their time. Sure. So different breeds have a different amount of light that they need during brood or during uh, whatever particular point of, of the and grow you, out. And the manual that comes with the birds will explain that, right? Usually, usually tell you, what? your service tech should know. <laughs> service techs almost always have a, a light meter handy, Yeah. but it's a whole lot better to be ahead of the curve. That's why I think as yeah. inexpensive these things are, you can get them for 20 bucks, that that, that work adequate. Sure. So, so you go purchase a light meter online or at, at a local photography store often will have these because they're used quite a bit in, in photography. But if you have one of these meters, you can check it yourself and stay ahead of that service tech, not have to wait on him to come tell you to fix something. I believe in being proactive. Yeah. And I think owning one of these is a really good thing. Plus, you, it helps with your with your dimmer. Yeah. You can decide how far you're dimming them, not based on a number or on a screen, but how the actual light is dimmed down. And that's where it's important because these birds at certain points in their lives need a certain amount of light or need to have the light dimmed down to a certain amount and just because your meter says such and such percentage yeah. doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that's what that's it'll actually be at in, the feed pan yeah, at the feed pan so yes. that's interesting so that's a that really could be a and they're not very pricey you said no right? like 20 bucks yeah but it's good to know if you want to get i mean you really want to get it get it tweaked and things like that yeah you can dial it in and and figure out exactly what kind of lighting you're getting in your houses and each house tends to vary a little bit and different points within the house. Don't just check one spot. Yeah. You know, your your roof height is a little bit different. I like to, to check it where the bulbs are the greatest distance away from the feed pans. Yeah. That way you, you kind of, that's going to be your, your, should be your lowest amount of lighting. Okay. So you, you get over there where the, the ceiling is higher up and, and hold it right down at the feed pan and right on top of the feed pan, check it there. Okay. So, filming in a chicken house is not the ideal situation for a number of reasons. This is not necessarily the best control pan to do this on, right? Set up sure. or whatever. Yeah. But also, the lights are causing havoc. But they're LED, so they're saving money while we do this. So, Jason, you have a little tip that you use for your control pan. So, tell me about that. All right. The control pan uh, is, is very important. And a lot of people have drop lights by their control pans. If they're, if they're close to the pans, they, they've attract the birds all right the common way that a lot of people do is they have a have a simple plug-in where they screw it in i found that these to be are pretty problematic and they just don't hold up very long so we started we started replacing all of them with these led strip lights these led lights that are they actually use way less amount of electricity than a regular bulb and they spread the light out all the way around the pan yeah you can just simply plug those right in and then you can wrap these around the inside of the sure. feed pan. And when you wrap them around and tie them off inside there, zip tie them up out of the way, of course. Yeah. And you get it in there, it lights up the pan exceptionally well. 
And these are very inexpensive. You can find them online for less than 10 bucks. Huh. So they're, they're a great way and they're waterproof. They have a IP uh, rating of waterproofness that's pretty high, yeah. keeps them um, safe. They're very durable. Birds, um, I haven't, we haven't had any of them torn up by a bird yet. Hmm. Now, I imagine that some of these guys that have the raised the heavy tom turkeys might have some issues with them. They tear up everything. Yeah. But um, the, these, these small chickens don't seem to have much problem with them. Okay. So th these have been a very good solution for drop lighting. Sure. Well, good. Well, I hope that helps. A little bit lengthy one there, but I think it could be a big help to you as far as maybe saving some money and saving some labor, too. So keeping some money in your pocket and maybe extending a little more rest time between flocks too without having to change bulbs. So anyway, maybe it's worth jumping to LED for you. So something to think about. Thanks for being with us. And if we can help you in any way, give me a holler. Uh, Alan at SouthlandOrganics.com or 1-800-608-3755.